Once upon a time, there was a young artist who got gifted by the gods. The gods said, choose between the mightiest sword and the mightiest pen. The artist chose and said, the pen is always mightier than the sword. Hey, this video actually took so long to make that it became winter and that means I can only film inside now. But that's not what you're here for anyways. You're here for this bad boy here. And maybe you have some other questions too. Like for instance, why am I speaking into a sock? Or, why am I using a sledgehammer as a camera mount? Most important, what I got here in my hands is really the best pen I've ever came across. And before I tell you the reason behind this bold statement, let's roll the beauty shots. Boom! Let me tell you a little bit more about the specs. This is a multi-pen with three slots and an erase on the back. One of the slots is permanently taken up by the mechanical pencil, but the other two are customizable and can actually be equipped with a handful of refills from different companies. Besides the high versatility of this pen due to customization properties and the integrated pen unit, there's something else that made me choose this pen over all the other multi-pens out there. And that is the form factor. So let's compare this pen to some other rather famous multi-pens so that I can get my point across. Okay, so here we have three different multi-pens and I think you can already get an idea what I mean with form factor because these are obviously all different sizes. This one has three slots, this one has four slots and this one has six slots. So they are all different but I want to kind of sum up all the pros and cons of each of these so this is obviously the pen that we're going to review today it's the Pentel MVB 500 RS transparent and it has three slots as I already said it has one mechanical pencil unit in it and two customizable slots so that's really cool in itself but now move on to a rather famous uh, multi pen which is of course the one from BIC and they are really great for writing they are four colors and I used this pen heavily in in school and while taking notes and it's especially great because they are really robust and solid and never kind of run out of ink or, or don't write immediately they're a really solid and a really a good choice but they also are still if you compare these two they are 
a little bit thicker and built a little bit more robust so they always look like a toy to me I don't know they're like designed in the in those saturated colors so they they kind of have this toy appearance to me I don't know okay so and this is a uh, multi pen from a company called Legami and it has six colors in it so and this is also a pen I've seen a lot often in recent times they kind of popped up in a, a lot of stores uh, and they're also quite nice because they're not like a, a barrel <laughs> they're still kind of manageable in size and are not like the these uh, 10 10 slotted uh, monsters that you can buy on jet pens or something <laughs> but yeah they have different colors and not all of them make sense for instance yellow is it's really light so um, depends on how you use them but these two are all non-customizable so you can't change the refills on these and I know there are some other pens other multi pens that you can actually customize but the most famous ones are the ones from uh, pilot yeah and there's one problem I have for the pilots and that is they are all gel based and I'm left-handed so gel based ink means that I'm going to smudge everything <laughs> and that's kind of uh, unique to me but I don't like them for that reason also I, uh, I think uh, the alcohol based inks are a lot more uh, you can do a lot more shading with them they're a little bit more subtle you can uh, use them a little bit nicer and with more finesse than you would with the, the water-based or gel-based inks and yeah that's it but of course they are all fine you can all do great artworks with them in fact there is a dude uh, I follow on Instagram I forgot his name unfortunately but I this will appear somewhere here and he makes amazing art with just these big pens and it's really cool but not today because this is the star of the show the uh, platinum MVB 500 and the cool thing about it is the customizability as I said and we're going to customize this pen with these uh, refills here so I bought these from different places these are actually uh, from a local store which was quite a coincidence that they were available there and these are actually uh, are ordered from Amazon so they're a little bit more yeah they have all this Japanese present gimmicky stuff with them so <laughs> what I want to do with this pen is something really unique and that is I want to have different widths of kind of line weights within this one pen and I ordered the thickest uh, pen refills which are one millimeter in size and I ordered the smallest which is uh, 0 0.4 millimeter in size so that is uh, the particular reason why I chose this pen because this is the only pen that supports that range of tip sizes so there are a lot of uh, pens supporting uh, 0 0.5 to up to uh, 1 or even 1.2 millimeters but they never go smaller than 0 0.5 except this pen and that what makes it is what makes it so great to me because it's like this little powerhouse you have the pencil for shading and sketching then you have the two colors or um, in my case you have two different line weights one for fine details and one for like silhouettes and blocking out and punching out some uh, special lines you want to put emphasis on and you also have the eraser so it's basically a whole uh, art kit in this uh, one pen and if you have seen my 
art kit video of this little guy, you will now know that this has been replaced with that guy here in my, in my pocket and I will discontinue the art kit for good. But <laughs> no, I, I still use it, but seriously, this is an amazing pen. And now I'm going to assemble this thing and show you how it works. As you can see the pen is uh, transparent so you can actually see the mechanism inside it which I think is really cool and it has a quite a unique mechanism compared to the Pilot multi pens which always have these uh, like, like slots on top. This one has actually like uh, a piston mechanism in here which is really cool to look at and also really satisfying and quick to use. How you uh, customize it is basically you take this bit off and pull out the refills here. So This pen actually came with uh, the color uh, red and blue but we're going to put these from Kaiweco the thick ones in there and the one from Zebra, the 0.4 uh, thickness ones. And these are just some um, black, uh, like they are the, basically the black version of these because I wanted to uh, have uh, also black refills. And you can actually uh, look up these specific refills and find even more refills out there because my. Uh, the store I, I went to bought uh, these and ordered these from knew immediately what I was uh, searching for and he, he said like this is a is a standardized format for these particular uh, refills so they, you, you can get more out of this pen if you look just for refills I imagine so let's open up these from Kaweco Kaweco and yeah they're a little bit thicker so they're for the the heavy duty stuff and you just insert them here and kind of snap them in place so like that it's a little bit difficult to uh, tell when they are really in the slot but i think that did fit really nicely in there so now the the zebra one i waited for you to open this so let's see where i can Whoa. and they are uh, as you can see really fine this the tip is like like a needle basically <laughs> and yeah you just turn it to see where the slot is and then insert it in there oh i'm full of fear it's a little bit tedious But I, I think that it's not even, is it in? No, it's not in. I can't, I can't turn it. Now it's in. Okay, now. So, now the pen is assembled. And let me also show you the eraser. It's kind of small, but you can actually get refills for these. So, that's also pretty cool. Because the... Usually these uh, pens have really hard to get refills and, and like the erasers all, always are not even available. And now we have this, now we have created the ultimate pen guys. I don't know what to say. And now we are going to do some sketching and basically test out the filaments and see what this thing can do. I'm starting out using the pencil and this is, I'm not warmed up so I'm going to go basic and draw my jellyfish robot mech thing. So I hope you can see that, I'm trying to go as big as I can here. I 
like a tr maybe try a little adjustment here or oh. back on track so let's punch out the undersides it's always kind of good to do the, the occlusion sides of the of the object because they are naturally um, emphasized more by the shadow and that can also carry over into your line art for instance also if you want to get better at line art per se uh, watch that video scott robertson made about his approach to line weight and he he has a really like um, a thought out method or like explains it really competently how he plots his his line weight and what line weight actually does visually to your eye and that is kind of it separates objects that are in the front from objects that are farther away from the camera and that is can be really powerful in your drawings now i'm punching the silhouette out a little bit more i'm going to really emphasize that kind of lens there now i'm switching to the to the lighter one and really getting in with the details how we can see this but i'm adding like small ridges to the to the pipes with these they always can really push the form so think about the direction they are going in so that the details make kind of sense in a draftsmanship exercise to to do these very repetitive details in a row because you you try to rush them you're always going to mess them up as i did here but i'm going, just going to roll with that and add it on the other side so it looks like it was intentionally also something that's really cool you can like uh, grow from the stronger lines outward to the smaller detailed more detailed lines and that kind of gives the curve the curves in the lines a nice sense of like speed and flow and it looks really cool i guess have a little cut line there i'm just going to erase that box color detail on on top here because the then i can see it more clearly and we can add some cross hatching around the edge here to kind of show the form Adding some more cut lines here, maybe adding another like inset to the to the camera in the middle, to the Oculus Rift thing. It, more, it looks more like a, a, a gamepad actually. I don't know if you are knowing him, but John Park, who is an amazing concept artist and teacher actually always did this uh, fundamental courses which has also as on youtube like small trailers of them and i couldn't afford to to buy his courses but i <laughs> downloaded all the the trailers and the trailers on a, on their own are so like <laughs> valuable to me i have i have them on my phone and whenever i have like some doubts or, or, or get a little bit of an of a low an art low so I, I watch those those trailers of his courses and they're so informative that this always uh, kind of gets me in the mood of, of drawing again it's really cool and he always did these things where he like would show what types of line weights he would use throughout his drawing like he would make a a light one then it would make a medium and then he would make a, a heavy one which would be the the thickest and only used for outlines and silhouettes 
and I always thought that it was so cool that he actually <laughs> wrote that down as a as a reference for himself. And it, it's it's all about that that technical and ma like blueprinty vibe that always gets me. I really like these wires. So they get nice and complex. And now I'm going to be erasing it. Oh no, I forget this I forgot the sphere. So maybe shooting some some lasers here to control keep it under control. We just can indicate that with small shapes like that. Then we switch, change gear and do the to the sphere with the thicker line width. And now I'm going to be erasing that. Make sure that it's all dry because the bigger ink splotches sometimes get a little bit, uh, are a little bit of trouble if you're going to erase the pencil sketch underneath. Kind of careful what I, what I'm erasing. Ah, that was close. That is. Kind of happened here and now we can actually uh, spend some time and go in again with the pencil and shade that whole thing here so that we actually get an idea of what the forms look like and i have um, a page in my sketchbook where i did that i'm going to show you so this is a very humble sketchbook i know <laughs> but I used the pen here a lot and really tried to to push that line weight. As you can see, I used the the more heavy line weight on the on the edge and on the overlaps. Basically, used this uh, pen to shade it, everything and for uh, the small uh, line weight for the cross hatching and all that good stuff. But it's still done with the 0 0.5 one. So this would be even smaller and you would be able to kind of get in on the on the eyebrows here and add tiny wrinkles and stuff like that. It's, that's so cool that th this is actually the, the thinnest uh, ballpoint pen I've ever seen. You can even see the ball. And it's it's really cool. Like, maybe I can, I can show that a little bit closer. It's really really sharp there so that's it that's everything i gotta say about this pen again platinum how is it <laughs> forgot the name so the platinum mvb 500 rs transparent this is the pen this is my pen number one again all the links of all the materials are in the description yeah i hope you enjoyed this video man this is, you know, the, the the thing about art supplies is always you're always searching for the best art supply. And I can say with confidence that I, for me at least, have found the best pen ever made. Perfect. This is it, spin that shit.